a very good evening to all of you. We'll begin with the masterclass now, the webinar. So today is all about study abroad loan masterclass, uh, HDFC Credula, and for which we have Nitin Sir, who is from HDFC Credula. Now, these are a few instructions for you all. Make sure you have a stable internet connection and a noise-free environment for which we recommend you to use your earphones for the best experience. Your microphones and cameras have been turned off for a smooth experience and will be turned on once we have the, in the last, when we have uh, the question answer round. And please drop in any message on the chat box if you have any queries related to anything that is being discussed. So moving ahead, these are some of the key parameters to compare. Firstly, loan amount and rate of interest. Then we'll also see to loan type, collateral versus non-collateral, co-applicant requirements. Then the processing time, processing fees, meritorium period, and payments during the initial years. And choose the best. Moving ahead, these are some of the average cost of completing masters abroad. So the average tuition fee and the average living expenses of the various countries are given on the screen, as uh, you can see. So basically, for USA, the average tuition fee would be 30 to 40 lakhs, whereas the living expense over there would be 15 to 20 lakhs, approximately. Moving ahead to UK, for which the uh, average tuition fees would be 15 to 20 five lakhs and the average living expense would be 15 to 20 lakhs moving ahead to canada universities it would cost around the tuition fee would be 25 to 30 lakhs and the living expense would be around 15 to 20 lakhs on an average to canada colleges 13 to 18 lakhs on an average for tuition fees and 15 to 20 lakhs on an average for living expenses Similarly, for Australia, we have 30 to 40 lakhs for tuition fee on an average and 15 to 20 for living expenses. In Ireland, it will be 20 to 25 lakhs on an average of tuition fee and living expense would be on an average 15 to 20 lakhs. Lastly, talking about Germany and Europe, it would be on an average, the tuition fee would be 5 to 20 lakhs, whereas the average living expense there would be 15 to 20 lakhs. Moving ahead, this is the loan process that um, the Uber grad uh, benefits that are available. So basically, get study abroad education loan from top lenders, which would consist of multiple offers from 10 plus lenders, eligible for merit scholarship, discounted processing fees. Then you'll also be eligible for a cash up up to rupees 10,000. Then we also have low interest rates from 9% and a complete visa support for all of you. So in order to avail these, you can just go to the link that has been provided, the email ID that has been provided. You can just contact them and you'll be able to get a lot of information related to it. So we also have US bank account accessibility for the students we also have we also provide students with international sim cards and accommodations so now i would like to hand over the platform to our um, esteemed guest for today mr nitin from hdfc credula so sir are you there Hello.
Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, am I audible? Anyone can respond. Okay. Thank you, Obergrad, for inviting me. Uh, today I will be discussing how HDFC Credula process an education loan to the student higher studies abroad. Uh, most of you mo must be knowing about HDFC Credula. Maybe the maybe your friends have taken loan. Most of most of you have some experience about HDFC Credula. We can discuss it here. Any doubts, you can just raise your hand and I'll take that questions within the presentation. So HDFC Credula, uh, I'll start just by introducing HDFC Credula. Uh, uh, what is HDFC Credula and where we are coming from? So HDFC Credula has around uh, 10 to 18 years of experience in education loan. We are, the, we are the NBFC who majorly, who primarily focuses on education loan. So we don't do any other loans apart from education loan. So we have, we have only single product, that is education loan. We fund for Indian universities. We fund for, we have started funding for Indian universities. We have, we are funding for abroad, as for all the universities, uh, with whoever students who are aspiring to move abroad for their higher studies we are happy to fund those students we don't have any restriction on colleges courses or anything we don't uh, discriminate between those so we we think that students should not downsize their uh, dreams when it comes to uh, higher studies abroad so that's the reason we are coming with a very vast uh, range of product which cater to all the students who are planning for their higher studies coming from any background, coming from any uh, strata of locations. OK, so with this introduction, I'll just uh, start the presentation. My name is Nitin Kumar, and I'll I handle channel, so basically I, I'll just introduce myself. So I basically look after all the channel partners that we have. And we also train students. And we also create awareness between the students so that they are they should be aware what product that we have, how it get processed before they apply to an education loan through a sales manager. So my contact number would be there. My contact number is with Ubergrad team. Uh, you can reach me out anytime. I'm very happy to guide you with education loan process. OK, so yes. So we can start the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So you can see uh, we have funded almost one lakh twenty four thousand students Indian students across India so we have so this is the number that we have funded till date we have you can see the countries which we have which we can fund we can fund 59 countries so there is no limitation either the student can choose any country according to their uh, financial uh, which also any country which where they uh, like to do or pursue their courses and also the finances that can, they can handle so for some countries have less financial requirement other countries have more financial requirements so according to their capability student can choose their countries and we are still able to fund those countries we have funded around 400 4,100 plus institutes. So this again uh, tells us that we are not seeing the course the institute which the students are going for. Then we generally see students' uh, academics or a student intention of going abroad. So that we can see on the basis of their academics. You can see on the basis of which course they are going for, which course they are coming from, that I will discuss it again later. 
stage of presentation and again we see 2000 2700 plus courses that we fund so uh, this is the variety this is the range that we fund this is how uh, we have funded it before and we are still eager to fund those students in the coming future so there are a lot of things once first of all it's a very tough decision once the student take they need to uh, go abroad and pursue their higher studies so that is that itself is a tough decision again if that decision if that decision is being taken by a student the second thing that student thing how they will manage their finances so not everybody is coming from a very privileged privileged class some are coming from very humble class so so second thing that stops that the student stops uh, is finances how will they manage their finances at the same time they also think how their parents will be here and you will and they will be going abroad how those finances will be managed so not only hdfc credula there are a lot of uh, nbfcs have come in the market who are actually serving student loan uh, giving education loan why because they have seen a growth in this pattern of students moving abroad for the higher studies so you can see a lot of NBFCs, a lot of banks, a lot of lenders has, ha, are there in the market. A lot of US lenders are also there in the market so that they, any which way they will help the students for uh, higher studies abroad. And that is good in one uh, prospect that student has multiple options of availing an education loan. Not everyone will get an education loan for one, one bank obviously some are getting declined some are getting uh, approved but having multiple players in the market multiple banks in the market it gives the student an option to avail an education loan from the best uh, lenders so we'll see how student can manage their funds so how should there are next slide please so we see that from past years of experience, we have seen that student has managed their fund that previously when the lenders were not, many lenders were not there in the market, student used to, only the privileged class used to move abroad for high studies because the, they can uh, have that kind of funding. So we have seen there are trends how the students uh, have funded their high studies abroad. So first is self-finance. Uh, second, we have seen scholarships, which consultants are playing a very major role, getting the students uh, scholarships on the courses and universities which they are opting for. And thirdly, uh, which we have seen is education loan. So uh, when it comes personally speaking, self-finance is not a very uh, good choice of uh, funding your higher education why because as we have seen in the later uh, previous years like we have met with a pandemic we have moved on from a pandemic so only thing that kept us alive is our savings so I personally I would not recommend any of the students to drain out all the family savings and go abroad so that is something uh, very, very futuristic so students but there is one option that student can opt for i will gen i generally suggest if, if a student has money or if the students are coming from that uh, privileged class and they have funding i generally suggest students to use blend of self finance and education loan so that will help the students to not get an education loan of a very higher amount and also it will be very feasible when we use a blend of any three blend of all these so if a student is getting in a scholarship scholarship it's very good but not all the students get scholarship not all the universities give scholarship so again that will not cover the cost of total cost of education saying that total cost of education saying that it's come 
it means tuition fees, cost of living expenses, ancillary expenses, everything is not covered in the scholarship. So again, student can use a blend of scholarships and education loan. Similarly, self-finance and education loan. So which will help students to maintain the education loan also. And also, that's a smart financial planning rather, I would say. OK, so these are the three ways how student can fund. Education loan has become cheaper day by day. So previously, it was more cheaper. Rather, I will tell uh, as and when the repo rate increases, NBFCs like us or banks like, and also the banks increase the repo rate. But nearly as the trend is growing, we have seen this trend. There, there is a little bit uh, ups and downs in the rate of interest part. But yes, that is very feasible for the student to avail an education loan. So education loan, we say, is a very smart choice of uh, a very smart choice for funding their higher education abroad. I'll explain how is that. Please, uh, next slide, please. So once we see if a person, if a student takes an education loan, I've said it's a very smart financial planning. Why? Because firstly, they are not draining out their family savings. Secondly, they are thinking about parents and everything. All obvious. And thirdly, they are also uh, have a. They also have a. Uh, what we can say? They, um, they also believe in themselves that, OK, I'll repay the amount once I'll get a job. And they believe in themselves that whichever course which I'm going for, whichever universities I'm going for, I'll get a job there. And that creates a sense of responsibility within the students. They preserve their savings. Also, they within the course duration, there is an interest that needs to be paid. That interest has attractive tax benefits. So whoever is earning in the family, either parents, mom, dad, brother, whoever is taking being a co-applicant will also get a tax benefit. And that tax benefit is 100% tax benefit. And there is a TCS benefit as, as well. So these two tax uh, benefits are there in the loan process, which can be availed by the co-applicant and let on by the student. So these factors also, also there is a repayment uh, spread across a long tenure. So student, when the student believe that, OK, we can get a job, they, they have also planned their finances to repay the loan after EMI. So we have a repayment period where they can stretch their loan period till 15 years. And they can, if they have money, sufficient money, they get sufficient money in near future, they can close their loan for after six months or one or two years. So I have never seen a student stretching their loan for 15 years. So on an average, I'll tell a student has repaid their loan in three to four years. So most of the students. That's the reason HDFC Credela has, uh, you can say, what uh, in a technical term we say NPS, but that means that student not paying the loan, we have a percentage of 0.0, 0 0.08%. So that is very less. When we see any PSUs on that percentage, it is 8 to 9%. So most of the student repays the loan. So that is, that is the good part. Next slide, please. When it comes to HDFC Credula, we fund 100%, saying that we, we I have I told we fund total cost of education. Total cost of education, saying that we cover everything. Everything means students have doubt, OK, my tuition fees will be covered or not. I'll not take the living expenses. I'll just take a tuition fee, thinking that, OK, that much amount cannot be funded. But with HDFC Credula, we don't fund only tuition fees. We fund everything. When a student comes to our platform, uh, we see which university 
the student is going again which country student is going we also have since we are coming from 18 19 years of experience we know what is the cost of living expenses of that particular country also we know the uh, how the university or the course is because of our experience of funding students so we know how much would be the cost of education so we fund everything that includes tuition fees that includes cost of living expenses accommodation expenses also you can say examination fees if you want to travel and we don't have a tickets also you can still take a loan from us buy your tickets library lab fees and ancillary expenses cost of books equipments everything that is covered under it you have to carry along. so once student comes to our platform I'll, I'll say that they don't have to bear any single expenses from their parent to get an education next slide please this is one factor which makes us different there are a lot of factors which makes us different from other landers but this is one of them there's margin money so margin money is a very technical term so i'll rather say even some of you who have taken the loan must be knowing that uh, for any loan for any loan coming to psus or home loan or bike loan or anything you must have seen that you need to pay some amount of money towards the loan so if i have taken a bike i i will not get 100 percent uh, benefit 100 percent loan so if I, my bike is of one lakh i'll i have to pay 20 to 30 percent of that amount so that 20 to 30 percent which i have paid 20000 or 30000 that is margin and rest of the amount will be funded by the banks similarly in education loan margin money concept is there are a lot of psus who fund x in, in this way wherein they ask the student or parents to fund a lump sum amount of 20 percent or 30 percent towards their education so the parents has to fund and the rest of the amount they can fund this concept is not there with hdfc cradilla so we don't ask any funding from the student parents or students while funding their education loan we fund 100 percent and there is no margin money so that is margin money for you so that's the reason we have we i have uh, in earlier slide we have discussed we fund 100 percent cost of education we don't say tuition fees next slide if you have any doubts in between you can just raise your hand and i'll tell you to take questions benefit of hdfc credula and education loan so as i said there are a lot of benefits with hdfc credula firstly uh multi-city co-borrower flexibility flexibility repayment option flexible repayment option means we don't have pre-closure charges so if a student has taken a loan with us and he has sufficient funds or he gets sufficient funds from somewhere he can close a loan after six months also he can pay a lump sum amount within six months also so there's no need of put if someone has taken a loan of 10 lakhs and he knows that he'll get a get 10 lakhs next year he wants to close after six months so he can close it after six months. there's no pre-closure charges even if we don't want to stretch that 10 lakhs for six months he can also put some amount lump sum amount in the loan account and you can no need of stretching 10 lakhs till six months also so there is no pre-closure charges student can stretch their loan amount till 15 years according to their paying capacity uh, multi-city co-borrower flexibility means uh, if a student is studying in Hyderabad and parents is somewhere in Bangalore or Vishakhapatnam or in other state student can still 
opt to we can still take them as a co applicant if a student we don't have region limitation that is one factor which also makes us different we can fund any student from anywhere if the student is in hyderabad if the student parents are somewhere in andhra or somewhere in vizag or visakhapatnam and he has a property somewhere in other state we can still fund those cases so no need of student being in the same place or parents being in the same place so there is no region or a uh, demographic limitation for funding an education loan so that is only with hdfc credla and not other lenders next slide please one thing okay are there any tax benefits yes there are tax benefits as i have discussed earlier we are the only nbfc which gives you tax benefit under section 80e tax benefit per se uh, if a student is going for a course of 2 years and obviously uh, with hdfc credla there has to uh, the parent or the co applicant has to pay a lump sum amount a partial interest or a full interest within that course duration or moratorium period and moratorium period so per se if the student parents is capable of paying 5000 or 10000 per month so that 10000 in an year it will become 12 months if he pays for 12 months it becomes 1 lakh 20000 that 1 lakh 20000 can be totally redeemed from their tax that can he can redeem from their tax while filing that tax when uh, filing itr the student parents can avail that benefit till 1 lakh 20000 so in a way it's helping students uh, the co applicant to file and get that benefit so that is tax benefit which is which we have and it is we have we are the only nbfcs which are licensed to give it so yes there is a tax benefit can we move to the next slide so hdfc credla has certain other advantages as well wherein we have we can fund unsecured loan till 75 lakhs uh here it's mentioned us case for us yes because the demand of us uh, piece is also high but when we see a uh, previous slide the person from uber grad also mentioning the course amount and the country how much uh, amount we need for that particular country so yes for us we can fund till 70 lakhs for for european countries we can fund and that i'm talking about unsecured for european countries we can fund till 25 to 30 lakhs same for canada for australia also 30 lakhs for uk also 30 lakhs so per se we can fund we fund a minimum of 20 to 25 lakhs for all the countries even for and for us we can fund till 70 to 75 lakhs there is no upper cap on the loan so no upper cap means if the student is taking an education loan with collateral so there is no upper cap they can take any amount not only 75 lakhs for any amount they can go up for and also i'll say that the collateral value doesn't uh depend on the loan amount so if a student is applying for a loan of 1 cr he doesn't have to show a collateral value of 1 cr so again that is again he can show a collateral value of 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs still we can fund him 1 cr loan approval before i20 admit letter so yes there is a possibility wherein we start processing loans 
for students before their I-20 or even though before they receive their admit letter for USA, for Canada, for UK, for all the countries. Uh, for European countries, we need admit letters. But for UK and Canada, primarily, we can fund without offer letters. Why? Because we have seen a huge rush in the student because once they receive an offer letter, the time is very, once after offer letter, the due date, the time duration is very less. And the student tend to apply at that point. So it might happen we get a huge rush and also the duration of uh, the loan process increase. So that's the reason we have stopped this and we can, a student can apply their loan processing even though they receive any offer letters. We can still give them a sanction letter. We can provide them multiple sanction letters, which will help them to apply to multiple universities to get the I-20. Show as a proof of fund. So we are totally online process. A totally online student doesn't. We don't encourage anyone to come to our branches we only have one branches in one city so obviously if everyone comes there will be a huge crowd so we don't encourage that it's totally web enabled service student can there is a dedicated manager who will help you throughout the process who will guide you throughout the process how to have the documents and everything there's off camp off campus expenses are also covered and as we discussed, there is flexibility of collateral and co-borrower. So these are certain benefits which we have with HDFC Credula. We will not, we cannot find with any other lenders. We all, and I discussed it earlier, we don't have region restriction. Can we move to next slide? What is the right time to apply an education loan? So that is a question that comes in the student's mind or when should we apply for an education loan? Uh, when should we go? Still there is time. We are going for next September or next May or January. We Still there is so many, so much time. Why should I apply now? Uh, see, uh, the thing is, the answer is uh, you can apply an education loan as early as you can. This will help you to be assured that your education loan has been sanctioned or not sanctioned. If it is sanctioned, you will be assured that your loan has been sanctioned and you can apply for multiple universities and whichever universities is there, there is a tension release in your mind that, okay, my loan has been sanctioned. In other scenario, when you see that your loan is not sanctioned, this will give you time wherein you can opt for other options if you are applying it loan in an early stage and the loan doesn't get sanctioned which will give you again okay i have applied now and not got sanctioned i can still apply with other banks because i have an ample of time this doesn't happen once you are once you apply at a very last minute last minute what happened i have seen many cases okay sir i have just one week of time I, I want to apply it now and i need a sanction i'm totally upon you this is a very wrong uh, uh judgment but which the student take wherein it's also depends on us because education loan is it's not only a loan it's a responsibility which i see wherein we need to process an education loan towards the student so that they can go for higher studies abroad if I didn't process the loan in time, or it didn't get sanctioned, obviously a year will get wasted. So my suggestion would be either you opt for HDFC credit law, either you don't opt for uh, HDFC credit law, or you're opting any other banks, whichever banks you have a relationship. Education loan is something, if you need an education loan, you should apply at a very early stage. If you have an option for US, for Canada, you see an option, ki, okay, we can apply without offer letter, you can still apply the off without offer letter. At least because that doesn't cost you anything. It we doesn't charge you anything for sending the documents and all. 
once the loan has been, you have sent us the document, the same set of documents needed by all other bankers. If you are applying with HDFC credit line and his loan has got sanctioned, the sales manager or the dedicated relationship manager will inform you, okay, your loan has got sanctioned. And you can still keep that loan sanctioned till two years. Okay, fine, it got sanctioned. Now I can apply for universities and I can look for the courses and whatever universities you are planning, you can go ahead. So this will give you a mental peace when it comes to the finance part. It will also help you to show is as a proof of funds, like some a student asked whether a blocked account can be shown or not. Yes, block account can be shown. This amount we give a sanction letter, you can show as a block account. We help with the block account. In Canada, we help with proof of funds as well. So this will give you a lot of mental peace when it comes to a loan process. What happens if you apply in a later stage, in the last minute rush, once loan has been rejected, you obviously lose your mind again, you go to a different bank, you don't have time, and that creates a huge chaos within the process. Next slide, please. So my suggestion would be you should apply education loan prior so that you have an ample amount of time even though your loan has been accepted or rejected i'm i'm watching all the questions coming in but i'll take once the slide has been slide will be completed and i'll answer all the questions and i'll try to answer the questions within the presentation as well so these are the major some factors. Uh, most of you will think, okay, how you decide an education loan? Okay, you're not uh, you have non-collateral options. You fund for all the universities. So what are the parameters that you decide? What are the basic parameters that we decide for an education loan? How we fund? So these are the three parameters on which we decide an education loan. So student academic profile parents profile and collateral so collateral is not mandatory as i told you earlier the first thing is someone who is mandatory is student the student is a hero here so we see their academic track records how academically they were how was if they have experience what relevant experience they have if they have experience or not so academic track record, what background the student is coming from, and what, and which course he is going for. Okay, so these are something that we look in the student profile. Again, then we see a parents profile. Parents profile, as it is an education loan, student is a main hero, and he is an applicant. Parent is someone who is supporting the student as a guardian. So we take them as a co-applicant, and that co-applicant, we see parents' income. Why we take a co-applicant? Because uh, we take interests, we charge interest. If the student has taken a loan of 10 lakh, we charge interest on them for coming two years in which the student is studying and there is one year of moratorium period. So these three years, we charge interest. And on the paying capacity of parent, we see how much a parent can pay. We give them an option of partial to full interest. If they opt for a partial interest, partial interest can be as low as 2,000 to 3,000, which the parent has to pay. So that's the reason the co-applicant is there. Since the student is abroad, we cannot get in touch with student. So only parents or co-applicants with, with, um, with, with, with whom we are in touch with. So parent profile, we see their salary. The question, there might be a question, what is the minimum salary range? So there is no minimum salary range. So if the parent profile is very good, 
the average salary from a very humble family also it will 20 to 25 thousand will also work then there is a collateral so per se they are not all the profiles are very suitable some profiles are difficult some academic students academics are difficult due to various reasons student op student has backlogs due to various reasons student civil has not very good parent civil is not very good in those cases uh, we see collateral so to make a profile stronger to make a profile uh, to go to the credit we take collateral so first say we have added student profile we have added parent profile and we see parent profile as lesser civil due to few reasons that might be obvious reasons there might be reasons that can be proved but still there is an issue so in those cases we take collateral suppose say uh, some per say if a parent has got uh, has taken a loan and again while they are paying it they fell ill or they got something they met with an accident and they are not able to pay the emi for certain period of time and then they have completed and they have paid the loan we will ask why the loan has not been paid within those years and they will have a proper proof so we can add collateral and we can still process the loan see uh, the thing is anything that can be proved is good so if the student has certain academic records okay and there is, then there is a gap of 2 years when i we see there is a gap of 1 year or 2 years but student still can prove that okay i was preparing for this exam or this exam and he shows us the admit card or the proper proof of those details we can still take those cases without any without any uh, considerations similarly any profile which can, any relevant or irrelevant or whatever happened or any mishap happened that can be proved is still good to go with an education loan and collateral is something which we add to the profile to make a profile stronger collateral can be anything collateral can be your house flat land fd so these are the things which we can take it as a collateral again who can be a co-applicant co-applicant can be a parent brother sister uncle aunt immediate uncle aunt maternal or paternal cousin brother cousin sister can be your uh, brother in law but there is a catch here if we want to process an education loan unsecured we only take a co-applicant who is very immediate immediate means mom dad brother sister so if these people are coming as a co-applicant then only the loan can be processed unsecured if your uncle aunt bro, cousin brother cousin sister maternal paternal anywhere if these people are coming as in the loan picture or brother in law or sister in law these people are coming in the loan picture we will we will need collateral there is a reason to it if if you are going for higher studies your mother father brother sister they are very immediate we can consider their incomes we can take those incomes and we can fund you on secure but uncle aunt if they are coming as an coming as a co-applicant they themselves would have a family so we cannot take whole if they are earning a lakh of rupees will not consider a lakh of rupees as a for them we will only consider 40 to 60% of their income towards your loan process because they will still have a family so that's the reason if they are coming we will need a collateral to process a loan
brother can be a co-applicant so that is not an issue as i told mother father brother sister anyone can be a co-applicant there is no discrimination in the co until and unless is very far relationship uncle sisters son those cannot be a co-applicant okay so until and unless they are very immediate they can be a co-applicant Again, okay, next slide, please. What is the eligibility criteria? I think I have discussed it. The eligibility criteria. And academic score, institute, course, country, co borrower, collateral security. So, eligibility criteria again, the same. Loan process is very simple. It's a three-step process, which you we collect the documents, we get the loan sanction and avail disbursement. It's it's very uh, simple. Wherein obviously I'll help you. We'll have a guidance. We'll have a relationship manager who will tell you what documents you need. You need to submit those documents, scanned copy to the uh, that manager. There is an app for HDFC Credula, wherein you can track your application also with putting your application ID and date of birth. Again, it takes around a week or a half. If you apply it earlier, it takes a week or a half time to process. And once the loan has been sanctioned, the disbursement is again two to three days of a process. Usually people think, OK, the well, loan has got sanctioned. Now they will just disburse the amount to the uh, bank account that's not happen that's not happens that way so there is a process involved in disbursement also you can see from sanction till disbursement you need to tell us when you want to take a disbursement once you tell us that this is the date i will want a disbursement from that date we'll start the disbursement process and from that day the day when you tell the disbursement to happen takes three to four days to get a disbursement to get a loan sanction it is again one and a half week. So overall if you say it's two weeks of process but disbursement is on, on your uh, call so you need to tell us when you need to take a disbursement next slide please so document that required for loan processing that we have kept it very minimal as i told you earlier we need kyc kyc everyone knows pan card aadhar card these is the kyc documents which says your name your identity and your address that is kyc again income documents may parents if they are salary they will see salary slips and bank statement if they are into business there is two years of itr and bank statement Again, there is academic documents, collateral, collateral is subjective, whatever collateral you want to put, land, flat, house, again, there should be a sale deed. So collateral documents, uh, property documents would be there. If they are putting in FT, we see FT papers. So these are the documents that is very minimal. Documents are also shared with Uber grad team. In a, you can check with them as well. OK, so next slide, please. So this is my name and my number. If anyone wants to start the process, ready, you can note it down. Or you can get in touch with the grad team. They will obviously guide it to me and will start the process and will give you the best of the service. Yes, so uh, now I can take questions. So. Whoever wants, first I'll read the chat. I have seen a lot of questions coming in. So, yeah. What all documents, Harshit Appu has asked, what all documents are required for loan? What all documents, as I just discussed, documents. And if you want exact what documents, you can ask Ubergrad team. They will tell you what are the exact documents. So, on a brief way, I can, I'll tell you 
academic documents student academic document if he has a gre score gre score doc uh, score uh, card again uh, with co applicant if your parents is being a co applicant the salary slips and bank statement if they are into business bank uh, itr returns and bank statements collateral if you are putting a collateral the, again property papers would be needed so i hope that answers your questions appu again lalit kumar in case of pre tuition fee if we need only block amount can we take required amount yes definitely if there is pre we cannot do anything so in the case of germany when you apply for a public university so there are a lot of countries where italy there is a lot of countries where the tuition fees is free you still not still want to take a loan yes you can take a loan you can show that as a blocked account we can we uh, disburse the amount before of a letter or before visa so that is that can be done so i think that is again lalit i have answered the question if you have doubt please raise your hand i'll take that as well kavya from when we can start applying loan offer getting admit or even before admit because admit we are not sure right which university will be finalized so exactly can we start applying for loan and start the process and is the cosigner required or collateral so kavya i have discussed this part you can start the loan process whenever you want since you are applying for usa you can start as early as possible and you can uh, have the loan sanction ready so that it will also help you applying to multiple universities uh if god forbid if your loan got rejected also you'll have some time so that you can apply for multiple options so you'll have options once you have a time you also have an option in your hand so i will suggest you apply as early as possible yes cosigner would be required we we can discuss parents can be a cosigner as i discussed uh anyone can be a cosigner collateral is not mandatory we can look on the profile case to case basis if that is required or not so i think that answers your questions devo kavya pavan i got sanction of 50 lakhs the given estimate of rate of interest is 11.75 non collateral my doubt is will they decrease the interest rate because i have applied for university now and i am going for better university health insurance mandatory okay so yes see interest rate you can negotiate your interest rate from your dedicated sales manager once you have received your sanction letter so while having your sanction letter they must be telling you what is your interest rate what is your processing fee and these those all credentials if you are not agreeing to that point you can negotiate with your sales manager if there is a possibility wherein sales manager can decrease the rate of interest they will obviously do that so that is not a question so yeah that is one thing again second is uh, now after having a sanction letter after having a sanction letter since we have an immediate proof we have released already released the sanction letter there is a less chances if they will decrease the rate of interest that is done only before receiving the sanction letter and health insurance is mandatory since uh, it's a very uh, uh, what do you say that as rule has been come that uh, the student is planning for higher studies abroad what most of the lenders are doing they are providing them health insurance health insurance is short health insurance there is a life insurance which covers student life and there is a secured insurance which also covers co applicant so there is a, a benefit that there is a benefit so that firstly that is one premium one time premium and if anything happens to a student after going abroad the life uh, the overall amount that the student has been taken will not paid by the insurance company and student parents would not be disturbed so that is one thing second thing now they have recently come up with also co applicant insurance so per se 
if the student has gone abroad and something happens to the co-applicant so still student can finish that course and that insurance company will take care of it so these are the two insurance which is actually you will see coming in which is, which is actually helping student and this is the major point which i have discussed there are a lot of other factors also in health insurance uh, if the student get uh, ill over there so this insurance company will help the uh, help to get doctors you need to get doc doctors prescription again you visit a doctor so those fees are also being covered so there are a lot of small things that they covered but this is the major factors that they are covering so which actually will help the student i understand that it not ought always happen and nobody prays for it but any mishap can happen any time so at least we can be ready for it so pawan i think i have answered your question aditya will you provide loan letter as a proof of income and which is needed for application yes definitely aditya we will provide a loan letter as a proof of income proof of funds we'll see income i think you just got confused between income and funds so we you can show our sanction letter as proof of funds for canada for usa for any country you want and in the loan letter do you mention which university this is applicable for that depends so firstly as i told you we don't require offer letter uh, for getting a sanction letter uh, for uh, providing a for starting a loan process so once you don't have a offer letter we don't need will give you a pre approval sanction letter and once you decide the university which university you are going for with we'll again update that sanction letter with the university name what about uk okay so it is relevant uh, i don't know what is what is the context of it uh is the collateral uh, is a is a collateral which has already been used for another abroad education loan for my brother will be submitted for me also no so if there are brother and sister going abroad and getting a putting a safe collateral one can opt for a non collateral one can opt for a collateral but if someone has already put a collateral then it is very uh, it, it is a matter of discussion again we need to check the profile and everything so it can be subjective we can still do your case without collateral but again that again depends on the income and the profiling of the case how much loan your brother has taken what is the interest that your, your father is paying so there are a lot of uh, complexity in it so we can discuss in it whether we can fund you without collateral or not but yes if there is a question that two education loan can be taken simultaneously on one collateral that is not that cannot be done shridhar my father is co applicant and he is salaried getting salary in his bank account but his company doesn't provide him salary slip certificate can i show bank statement as a proof yes you can show bank statement as a proof if your father also asks the hr of the company to give the salary certificate they will provide you salary certificate also uh, shridhar aditya verma if we get a loan sanction now and course starts next year will be the period of period of time also counted no 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 only thing only the time when you take a disbursement the interest will be calculated if you have kept your loan you have started the process now your your loan got sanctioned and you going for next september 2024 you don't have to pay any interest the loan will still be sanctioned and you can avail that loan in 2024 without any charges only once there is a fee paid once you want to opt a processing fee uh, opt a sanction letter then there is a processing fee is being paid and the interest is calculated only once you take a disbursement 
received the condition letter from the University of East London and I need to pay the college before 17th of November. I, if I apply loan now, am I able to receive money before it? Yes, we can try to get you money before that until and unless you will not apply, we will not able to tell you. So we need to have all the documents in place and we can still do it before 17th November. At least we can give you a decision before 17th November. Decision can be given in a week's time. Can we start applying loan even before applying the university? Because we, I think I have answered these questions, Kavya. Co-signer applicant. For the collateral loan process, already a loan has been taken. So education loan will be given on that. Already, an ed if the collateral is already on loan, we cannot take it as a preferred collateral. Then we need to look at as a unsecured loan, chances of unsecured loan. What if parent salary and bank history is not so good and will it affect my loan process? Parent salary and bank history is not so good. It's OK. Uh, not everyone uh, parents has that bank statement and salary because we have commitments. So that's fine. We can still uh, look onto case of case basis. That will not affect your loan process. My father is retired and getting pension. Can he be a co-applicant? Yes, your father can be a co-applicant. If he is receiving a pension, he needs to show a PPO order copy. If a collateral is my grandfather's name, Will it be accepted? Yes, that can be accepted. We'll take grandfather KYC also. So that can be accepted. And this. And also, if your father is the only child of grandfather, so then only that collateral will be accepted. Otherwise, if your father has brother, so then there is a discussion question ki everyone has to agree that that collateral is coming under loan process i think that answers your question lalit imam b sheikh my mother is a co-applicant and she is salaried getting salary in her bank account but her company doesn't provide salary slip certificate can i show bank account as proof of yes imam you can show bank account as a proof of statement that will not affect Sabya. Can a brother be can be can a brother in US be a co-applicant? Yes, brother can be in US can be a co-applicant. He has to have a NRE NRO account in India. My brother is in US can be a co-applicant. Yes. Prithvi Krishna. What if relationship manager is not responsive? You can call me Prithvi. So I am always responsive. Or you can contact Uber Grad team. So they are always there. You're, you can always let me know what happened. Lalit Kumar, only if I want money for block account purpose. Yes, you can. Lalit, Prithvi Krishna, your support is very bad. After initiating a loan uh, HDF, with HDFC, uh, initiating a loan with HDFC, what's your opinion on this? Uh, that is again very subjective, Prithvi. I understand you must have faced some issues with HDFC. So not everyone is perfect. So yeah, every student has their own experience. Some say it's good, some say it's bad, and I completely agree. Agree to it if you have faced something like that. Let me know uh, if there is some issue that you have been faced, and if I can resolve it any time, in any way. So I'll take that and yes, you can get in touch with it. Lalit, yeah, I am applying for Germany. Okay. Is GRE needed? For Germany, I don't think GRE is required. So it's okay. Harshit Reddy, my academic performance is performance ID good. I have 75% in graduation, seven in IELTS rank. Okay, my father is a uh, lorry business. My father has less civil score and has collateral and have five liquors of land. Again, Harshit, that is very uh, subjective. 
we need to discuss on it sibyl how would you know the sibyl if your father has taken loan and someone has told the sibyl is not very good okay that is again uh, but we don't uh, as a just a suggestion to the student we are uh, we, uh, you are very concerned about sibyl please don't check your sibyl uh, and then there from different app why because also it reduces sibyl score so if less sibyl is there we can see the possibilities of doing the case harshit will still take the case himambi sheik for ireland when we have to start a loan process after getting an admit card yes you can submit all the documents once you receive an admit you can submit that as so, so at least we can start an initial process harshit reddy my academic performance id i did good i have 75% graduation seven my father is a, okay i have, i think i have answered that uh prithvi uh, your support is very bad okay i have to, i think i can have answered this my academic performance is good. so i think i'm getting a repeated questions other lenders are very supportive in sharing uh, required documents after taking the loan why doesn't credila care about the student up to don't get disbursed okay the loan get disbursed there is a process to it so once the loan get disbursed uh since i will be assigning a relationship manager who will be handling your case from from your loan uh, login till sanction and till get you get a first disbursement once you get a first disbursement there is a process to it uh through which you can again ask for disbursement and that is very smooth i think whoever is your uh, loan manager has not uh, guided you properly uh, please uh, you have my number you can contact me i'll guide you of course as you said european countries are exception for applying loan before getting admit card is it true uh, any other way apply loan before getting admit uh since european countries we need of a letter in order to uh, start the loan process but you can still submit the all the documents and if you are decided on the university you can write us a mail that this is the university which i am planning for and i'll be opting for and, and and the date when you will receive that offer letter and we can on that basis of that mail we can start your loan process also for european country and this is for everyone whoever plans for european country if i decided on the university part you can write us a mail to the relationship manager who, which is who, uh, who i will be assigning it you just write them a mail that this is the university which i have opted for this is the country which i am going for and i will be getting a, a offer letter to this date and we can start the process on the basis of that mail Okay, I got seven point five CGPA in engineering and thirteen backlogs. Okay, I completed my engineering four years and right after. And who is this? Mehul. Okay, uh, I joined family construction business. Right now we are working on a prestigious project. Can I get an education loan for higher studies? Mehul, I need to uh, look on the profile. In your case. since you have 13 backlogs so you have engineering ka background you are working with your father very good uh, but we can discuss on it uh, i'll suggest you can have a word with me we can again discuss it one on one prithvi uh, can you answer my questions i think i have answered all your questions so i don't see any as okay can you give me context of support after trying to reach office from another country hello mr nitin your okay prithvi a lot of questions you just have my number we can talk one on one is gic for canada included in this loan process yes gic for canada is included for the loan process we help with the gic amount as well the agricultural land of 5 acres on my name as a co agricultural property will not be considered as a co applicant uh, sorry collateral so anything which is agricultural and not coming under municipal area will not consider as a collateral civil checking from other app affects civil score okay 
I had 13 backlogs. Can I apply? Yes, you can apply. Apply will not cost you anything. Please give me your contact details. I have shared it. I am planning to do masters. My father doing business due to pandemic. His civil score has gone very low. We don't have collateral. My can my uncle, mother's BA collateral, and my co applicant for unsecured loan. Ranjit Nath, we can discuss the profile. Uh, it's very uh, difficult to tell you now. So you can call me. We can discuss discuss that one on one, and I'll obviously tell you the possibilities of applying a loan. Does having backlog UG affect on loan? Even if I go, that might that we need to again see if there is any gap or not. So yeah, if there is a gap, that will affect. But having a good university, that can be considered. Does the tuition fees release semester wise to the university? Tuition fees is released according to I 20, uh, or you need to tell us when that has to be released. So, depending on your suggestions, we'll release the student tuition fees. Mehul, we need to discuss 13 backlog guy. We don't have any collateral. Why agricultural land don't come under education loan? Is there any chance to make it? And <laughs> Lalit Kumar, agricultural land doesn't come under education loan because I'll tell you, uh, there is a plan for every state. A plan is made on the basis of agricultural land and non-agricultural land. Agricultural land is something which no bank will take as a collateral for education loan. Only agricultural loan can be given on that. To get an education loan, you need to show us a land which is residential or coming under municipal area. Okay, so I think I have end with all the questions. So I've seen, I've seen a lot of hands. Uh, Harshit Reddy, please tell me. Hello. Any questions, anyone? Prithvi, uh, Sridhar, I can see these hands. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi, Sridhar, please tell me. Yeah, hi. Uh, I actually put a question on that. Like, uh, my father doesn't have a salary slip on the salary certificate. So I asked with the HR also, but they told, like, uh, He's working on a contract, so the contract will change often. So we can't provide you with a salary slip or a certificate. So that's why I asked you whether I can proceed with only the sal I mean the bank statement or not. Bank statement. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can provide bank statement. I think I have answered that. You can provide yeah, yeah. bank statements, and that can be taken care of. Since your salary is getting on bank, so that is again not an issue. So statement is self enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Statement is self enough. Anything that can be proved, as I told, anything mm -hmm. that can be proved is considered. Okay, and uh, also uh, my father Sibyl is also around uh, six fifty year problem because he <laughs> delayed uh, one payment. Clearly. Okay, we have to look on that. So okay. we will definitely have to check why Sibyl is less again. If that can be proved, we'll take into consideration. Okay. Okay, but I can try with you this document. See, the, the thing is whether the loan is loan will get sanctioned or not, it's not in my hand. But okay. I can definitely assure that I will present your file in such a way that it should get sanctioned. And if it is not getting sanctioned, there will be a proper reason to it. So I believe yeah, I if something is not happening, there is a reason to it. If there's no reason, it will not happen, right? So okay. that's how it is. Actually, I tried before uh, the another uh, man hdfc credit or another branch but uh, they told me like without a salary slip or a certificate we cannot uh, proceed with uh, See, if you have tried it earlier then i need to check the profile again okay what happens we can apply only once with hdfc credit law so it cannot it cannot happen you apply in delhi and you can again apply in hyderabad so okay. that is not happening because you even though you have applied in delhi the same application will come to me so I okay. cannot rename it to another manager. So if okay. that manager has messed up the case, 
mm-hmm. again that is very difficult to revoke it but i will definitely see uh, you can pass on my app i pass on the app id so you can take my number from uber grab and okay. you can pass on your app id too okay? okay thank you or the slide has my number if you have noted down yeah i noted down okay yeah other question please uh prithvi okay. yeah please go ahead hey nitin how you doing yeah i'm doing good you have lot of issues uh please tell me oh yeah your service has been exemplary so i would like to know more about your customer support metrics <laughs> so i just want to understand what uh, what is exactly that you have faced and <laughs> Oh yeah, so I would need my uh, statement, the current loan statement, and I've been trying to reach out to my relationship manager, and he never responds my calls. Even if he answers my calls, he just gives me an excuse that I'm at home, I'm at, I'm doing something, and I'll give you a call back in some time, and he never get back, gets back to me. So, so I had you, to send my. Did you mail uh, to support dot hfc kerala dot com anytime? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm actually at the point where I've been sending my parents to the office at least twice which a month. Which location have? Which location are you uh, having this issue? Hyderabad. What is the sales manager's name? It was Srikant. Srikant left long back. Yeah, then that's not my responsibility, right? So if no, no, he's no. not Shrikan working for me anymore, anyway. I think sales manager name is Srikant. When is your loan process happened? It was two years ago. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you a correct contact number. You can contact her. She'll guide you. Her name is Shilpa. She takes care of con. Uh, she takes care of customer service in Hyderabad, and she. Yeah, that would be great, but. I I don't understand your customer support metrics. There's nothing on your website. There's nothing where even if I send a there mail to customer support. There is a customer support. There's support on hdf support dot hdfc kerala dot com. So in that, if you mail it to that, they will reply it in within two days, I think. If that is not happening, you can raise it again because that generally happens. Uh, yeah, but that hasn't been the case. So yeah. I have my so friends here, thing. and they have taken loans from another lender, and it's been very smooth process See, with I, them. I cannot compare my our service to other service. Obviously, your experience might be bad, and I can totally agree. Not everyone experience is good with everyone. So I can only suggest you. I can only guide you. I'll give you the customer service number. You can speak to her. You get your query solved, and. I am really sorry if you have faced such an issue. Uh, yes, and that's because we I I deal with almost more more of the student every day, and I generally mm-hmm. tell them after disbursement you just contact support dot hfc service and you can put me in cc. That has generally happens in two days. So if you have faced something like that, I am really sorry. I'll. Yeah, I I, I really you. appreciate that you no, are no, actually no. initiating this step for the next applicants. But in my case, I have no idea. So some no, of no. them say no, I will some of them. That. From this point, I can only help you. Uh, if yep. we take the, all the blamings, yeah, I'm ready to take all the blamings. And you, if you face such like situation like that, right. from, but from this step, I can guide you. I can help. You. So obviously, call me on Monday, or if you have my contact number, I'll. share the number of the customer share okay. yep that sounds good and thank you yeah. very much for your support okay. nitin and yeah. i'm sorry to bomb this presentation i had not no other me to not reach out to you this presentation is all about anyone who has faced any thing with hfc kerala or also to make them aware about hfc kerala yeah because i am stuck here and very not limited resources to reach out you to someone in india so i had to join this call you can call me you can call me on monday or you just text me i'll share the yeah. customer right sweet thank you and have What's a good the night the direct number you just have to call and we'll get your things sorted okay mehul uh mehul is there any question hello yeah hi new please tell me 
Yeah, so I, as I told you, I had uh, 13 backlogs in my engineering. Okay, I have already asked that 13 backlog. I need to look onto it. <laughs> 13 backlog is there, and I lot I'll, I'll be very afraid. It's a quite big backlog. So I need to check whether uh, without. Yeah, what are the chances, sir? Like, uh, see, the thing like... is, we take backlogs. That is not an issue. But uh, we can do the process with collateral. Again, without, as you said, it's without collateral. I need to check situation based. We need to provide some documents also. So, so actually, uh, applying yeah. is applying is not an issue. You can still apply until and unless you will not apply. We will not able to tell you whether it will get sanctioned or not. See, uh, so uh, I'll explain my profile a bit to you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, I did my engineering from VIT Velour and right after that I joined my family with my father's family business. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, uh, uh, like right now, I'm, I'm working in a very prestigious project. As I told you, uh, it's a Ram Mandi project. So uh, like uh, I am like kind of heading it. And uh, uh, and I did my engineering from civil background, sir. And right uh, and I'm uh, like planning to go for uh, construction planning and management, the course which I am looking for. Mm -hmm. So, I think uh, I'll be having good profiles for applying and everything. So, backlogs what, should not I matter tell, much. That's what I yeah. told you. Ki we, can, we don't only look after backlogs. I told you with three certain credentials, the like student profile, parent profile, and all these three parameters. Okay, so backlogs is not only the one parameter where the loan will get declined. There are a lot of other parameters which will help your loan to get processed. But for that, okay. we need a, a document for that. So I will okay. and you apply for a loan. Let me try. We'll see the possibilities of having a loan. And also we'll suggest you how we can work on it. Uh, and so please, can you repeat your contact details? Uh, I was not there at that time. You so... can get in touch with uh, Ubergrad. So Ubergrad, okay. Gautam, or uh, Yogeshwar, or anyone. They have okay. my contact details, so they will guide you. Okay. Okay. So okay. Yes. Okay. I can call uh, directly, right? I can call and uh, have the discussion after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can call Ubergrad to. Discuss. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank Not you. a problem. Anyone else who has any uh, doubt? Hello. Uh, Hi. Rajni, Ranji, Ranjit, please tell me. Yeah, please tell yes. uh, Actually, I'm the one yeah. who mentioned like uh, my father's civil score is very low. Very due to low, pandemic. yes. And uh, can can he be my co applicant for an unsecured loan? Say, I'll suggest you if your father has a lower civil score and you know that, you don't put him as a co applicant. So if you have okay. any other, uh, other people in the family who is working, please put them as a co applicant. No, no. We can still work on it. We'll not show uh, your father in the loan picture, and that's how we can process. But if you show father is a co -app, um, father having low civil score as a co applicant on an initial step, once the documents be uploaded in our system, that cannot be removed. So even though after that you want to put anyone else as a co applicant, you cannot. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. So that's all. If you know it, don't make him as a co-applicant. Let us know that he is having a low civil score. We so don't show him as a loan. Don't show in the loan picture. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the civil score required for a co-applicant? Civil score ideally we require six seven fifty and above. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else who's having any doubts? Hello, hi. Uh, hey, actually, yeah, uh, 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 my name is uh, like uh, my mother. She's a uh, uh, she's in a she's working in uh, as a uh, like teacher. Mm -hmm. She have a like like income of twenty around. Mm -hmm. But she's also a she's a bank holder. We have any kind of positives by seeing her bank statement and bank balance, uh, like that too, for issuing this loan, or any income might affect her in any other terms to getting a loan. 
as a non collateral the mother works in hdfc bank no 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 she is a she is a she is an employee uh, and she is holding a hdfc account from long time okay so can be used because they are, they are not able to give uh, pay slips to her not a problem if the money is reflecting in the bank account will take bank account as a, as a yeah okay so also yeah. she have some uh, other extra bank balance transactions in her account not Does a problem be, yeah yeah uh, it will be helpful right yes yes okay right thank you so much thank you yeah thank you Anyone else who is having any doubts? If there is no pay slips for the co-applicant, how many months of back statement is required? Six months. Six months. Okay. Neil, please. Yeah. Anyone else who is having any doubts? Hello. Yeah, hi, Mehul. Please. Yeah, uh, sir. What is the procedure of uh, repayment, sir? How do we repay the loan amount? Repayment Dice. can be uh, done. Uh, you can stretch your loan till fifteen years. You can close your loan after six months. So there is no pre-closure charges. You can start your EMI after your course gets completed, and there is one year of moratorium, and then your EMI will start. within the course duration uh, your mom or your dad or anyone who who is your co applicant is can be a need to pay the interest interest okay and the uh, principal will and principal will start after like i have to pay the principal after 2 years right correct correct like if my course is of 1 year and uh, i'll get like uh, one year uh, break and after that the emi will start for principal amount And yes. and interest interest I have to pay from from first month itself. Yes, from day one. From day one. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. any yeah. other questions from you guys if yes you can just unmute yourselves and directly ask your doubts from sir also guys i have shared a link with you all in the chat box so if you have any doubts you can submit a request to our loan on the website using this link and we'll get you in contact with our loan experts as well i have shared the link you can check out the link as well thank you so i don't think so there are any more questions sir not a problem so thank you for inviting me and i had a wonderful session thank you yogeshwar sir to giving me this platform so i'll be looking forward so whoever wants just we can get in touch and we'll give the best service as assured to bagrat Yes sir definitely sir okay. thank you so much for joining thank you so much thank you everyone and have a wonderful weekend